So right now I'm just going to run through the operator controls on the Metler Toledo terminal on this machine, and then later on I'll go into editing the recipes and um, container tear tables. So this is your live uh, scale readout. Um, if before you start it's not at zero, you can hit this button and it'll zero it out. This button here will start your fill, and um, you also have start fill down here. This one um, will tell you what your target value is, and if you come over here and hit the binoculars again, you can select between the recipes that have already been added in. You cannot add recipes from here, you have to go through the settings to do that. So these are just the recipes you've already added in. So I'm on 5 gallon, I can select OK. It'll let you see the values. You can change them here. These are the ones that are saved within the settings. If you change them here, they do not save within the settings. So like this is kind of like a base point to start at, which normally works out pretty well because your weight per gallon will change. So the spill and stuff like that should be pretty close. You might have to change your target, you know, 42 or a little off what your average is. Um, and then if you do need to come down, you can scroll down and adjust your spill and the fine feed. So the spill is how early the fill head will shut off. So like right now, the fill head will shut off at 39 pounds, and it's assuming that you have um, one pound of product in between the container and the fill head when it shuts off. So things that can adjust or affect this are the density of your product, but also how high above the container you have your fill head. So you want to make sure that you're setting your container or the fill head height about the same um, every time you change between ones and fives because if you have it way above, that spill is going to be a lot more than if you have it really close. And then fine feed is set to three pounds, so that means that the fill cycle will go into a dribble mode um, three pounds before the target weight's reached, so at 37 pounds. And then you have your tolerances down here as well. So once you're happy with all those numbers, you can hit OK, and that'll be loaded in. And then you need to come over to the fourth button here, um, and this is your container tear. So you need to select the container that you're want running. Um, this runs a net weight, so the scale will see the container weight, 2.36 pounds, um, and then before the fill starts, it'll zero out. Now, if your container, for whatever reason, was to weigh 3.36 pounds, then the fill would start at a pound, because it's going to tear what you put in here. It doesn't tear just what's on the scale. So select your proper container weight. Um, and then from there, you're ready to start your fill. So like I said before, you have the start fill button here, but you also have it here. Uh, this button is pause fill and resume fill. So if for whatever reason you just need to stop halfway through, you can resume. Um, when you pause the fill up on the screen, there'll be an option to abort or continue, just like the resume down here. The continue on the screen and the resume down here are the same thing. Um, but if you hit abort, you're not able to resume that fill you would have to start with a fresh container again. Um, and then if at the end you're a little low because your spill value, value was off or something, if you hit jog, it'll just quickly open. Well, if you hold it down, it'll hold it open, but it'll open the valves and the fill head to just jog a little more product into the container, and then you'll see the live weight readout up here. And then down to the rest of the push buttons here. You've got emergency stop at the bottom. Um, after an e-stop, this busy wink will go red, so you know that it's in e-stop mode. When you pull it, this will stay red. You have to hit the reset to get the system to reset. Um, index container, when you hit that, the con conveyor will move the container down one position. Uh, you can select the heads between head one and two. This filling machine does have two heads on it, but they're locked out, so you can only use one at a time. Um, and then fill flush, if, if it's on fill mode, it'll, you know, open and close as you tell it to start and stop, but if it's on flush mode, it's basically just an override, and it'll open up the valves and the fill head um, for when you're cleaning at the end of the run. So the handle at the top of the screen there is what adjusts the carriage up and down. Um, so that'll adjust the height of your fill head, so like I said before, you want to keep that consistent um, when you're changing between gallons and fives. I would keep it at about a half an inch above the height of the container. Um, and then the handle down here in the lower part of the screen over here 
that's what slides the indexing assembly um, kind of forward and back. So all these indexing dogs is what we call them, is they, they index forward, push the pail, and then return. So right now that's set up for five gallons, um, but if you were running a one gallon, you want the gallon to stop in the middle of the scale. So this one would need to move down to about here. So by turning that handle, you'll see it move and just put a gallon um, in front of that and just wind the handle until the gallon's centered on the scale um, and then it'll be good. Now it's set up where the center lines between the fill head and the crimper are the same. So the crimper we can swap out for a press plate to press the lids on gallons. So as long as you have the gallon centered under the fill head on the scale, um, you won't have to adjust the sensor down at the crimper because it's centered up with the center line of the crimper. So the container will stop in the, in the right spot. So you have two fill heads on this and you want to keep the fill head centered over the scale all the time. So the carriage actually slides left and right. So I'll show you that now how to adjust that. So over on the right hand side of the machine when you're facing it, um, by the regulator, there's this handle down here. And if you wind it, if you wind it, it'll move the fill head left and right so you can keep it centered. So that's how you're going to adjust um, when you're switching between fill head 1 and fill head 2 to make sure that they're centered on the scale. And then your regulators here, they've got little green indicators and um, little arrows as for where the pressure should be on each one of them. So the first one there, you really want to keep it between like 60 and 80 pounds. And the second one you can keep between like 55 and 60 or 75 pounds. Um, they're different because the first one is the bulk of the air to run the crimper and to open the ball valves. And then the second one um, has a finer micron filter on it and that runs the control air. So the second one doesn't need to be as high a pressure because it's just running the controller, but that first one you need a little more pressure to it. And you will need to feed this regulator with a half inch or three quarter inch line. Um, a quarter inch line or three eighths line really won't cut it for the amount of volume that the crimper will use. So this is the crimper portion of the machine. Um, so when the pail indexes down, and presses that sensor in, uh, the crimp pedal come down. So if for whatever reason the sensor isn't getting pressed in, I, I wouldn't move the sensor because I've got it set where it should be. Um, you want to adjust the index and conveyor by this handle over here so that the container stops centered up with that sensor. So if you have the container centered with the fill head like I was saying before, it'll be centered with that sensor because the index and conveyor moves by the same distance every time. So if you need more of a crimp, you can move this handle up here. That'll adjust the whole assembly up and down. Um, this orange over here is a counter, so once you found a good spot, I would write it right on the front of this guard, um, the number that your five gallons are at and the number that your one gallons are at. And um, when you want to press one gallon lids on, you'll swap to a press plate, which I'll show you here in just a second. Um, and basically, it just unthreads from up here, the crimp assembly, and you just thread on the press plate and then adjust your height. Uh, with the door open like I had it now, the machine is an e-stop and it won't operate. So you must shut the door and then hit reset down on the crimper control panel over here, which is what I'll go over now. So I just had the door open to the crimp cage and I shut it, but the Vizzy Wink is still red, so I'll have to hit the reset button. And just hold it in for just a second, don't just like press it like that, just hold it in for a second. Um, if you press it too quickly, the, the valve doesn't have time to detent, and then it won't reset properly. Um, so up the top you have your e-stop indicator, crimper on off. Uh, you can turn the crimper off and then it just won't cycle. Um, manual auto cycle, if you turn it to auto cycle, the conveyor will basically just run and pass through and it'll just keep running until you turn it off 
Um, it will stop to crimp the crimper, or to crimp the container, so the, con the conveyor is not allowed to cycle unless the crimper is in the home position. So in auto mode, you can run containers through and crimp them or press the lids on. You just can't really fill in auto mode because the fill cycle and the crimp cycle aren't correlated. Um, so once the container's finished crimping, it'll just pull the container out of the fill area, whether it's filling or not. Uh, your ESOP here, index containers. You have index container buttons from either end of the machine. So when you're manually running the machine, um, if you're just a single operator over here and you're done filling and you have the conveyor filled with containers, you can come down this end and hit index while you're unloading them. So then this first dial engage here, or the crimp pressure. So this correlates with the crimp height um, as to how good of a crimp you're going to get. The pressure I have set between 45 and 50 right now, that's usually pretty good. Um, if you need a better crimp, I would really adjust the height down. But you can only go so far before you start crushing a pail. But if you see that the cylinder isn't extending all the way, that's when you want to increase the crimp pressure um, because the cylinder physically doesn't have enough force to come down. So right now between 45 and 50, it has enough force to press all the way down. So to adjust your crimp, you really just want to adjust the height. And then your conveyor reset speed over here is how fast the index and conveyor returns, not how fast it's going to push them forward. It uses the full amount of air it can to push them forward because if you have the or conveyor loaded down with five gallon pails, that can be a lot of weight. Um, there are some flow controls to adjust to kind of fine tune it that I'll go back to and show you down in the fill area where the operator can easily access them. And then the last thing to go along with the crimper here is this sensor right here is a backup sensor. So you can move that downstream. We left a little bit of coiled up wire there, or tube there. Um, so if that gets blocked, the conveyor won't index until it becomes unblocked. So if you're not using like a, a roller conveyor after this, like I have set up here, um, and you're just pulling them off manually and putting them on a pallet or something, set this up so that if a pail is sitting on the end in the last position, that sensor's pressed, and then you're not going to be able to accidentally shove a pail off the conveyor um, without someone being there to catch it or without having a roller conveyor there. So this is the press plate. Um, so you just thread this on to where you thread the crimper off from, and it's just smooth on the bottom to press on any one gallon lids. Um, to adjust the height, to set the height of this up, if you open the door, you can kind of pull down on the crimper, or if you run a container under there um, and let it start crimping down and then open the door, it'll be in the down position. And then with it fully down, once you have the press plate threaded on, you can just drop it down on top of a one gallon container and that's a pretty good starting point. Um, and then if you need a little more of a press, you can just lower the um, adjustment assembly down. So down here above the um, conveyor placement adjustment or the container placement adjustment handle for the indexer, then we have the conveyor forward speed and the conveyor return speed. So those are just flow controls. So if your conveyor is pushing forward a little too fast and sloshing your product out from the fill area before you can get a lid on, just wind that in and slow it down. If you think you can run a little faster, you can pull it out. Uh, the return speed is similar to the pressure one, how fast it returns, um, but it's just a little more accessible right there for the operator if they need to change it. You shouldn't really have to mess with the return speed one. And then I'll just show you here as you wind the handle you can see the indexer assembly moving. So that's how you adjust where the container stops centered under the fill head and scale assembly. So here I'm just gonna show you how to get into the setup to adjust or edit or add um, a target table, so like a recipe and a container tear setting. So when you start it up, this is what you'll see, the selection of soft keys. So if you press down, it'll scroll through them. Uh, this one with the exclamation mark here, the fifth one, press that, and it brings you to the setup. So it defaults to scale, 
but if you go down to application and hit over, not enter, and then over again on memory, you can scroll down to target table, and then you can press enter on target table. So this is the target table of kind of settings. You don't have to adjust those. If you hit the little magnifying glass, the middle one here, it'll take you to target search. So if you've got, you know, a bunch of recipes in here and you know you need to get to recipe 37, they all have ID numbers, um, which I just label, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, so you can come down to data, hit over, I'm sorry, enter, over, enter, um, and input like 37. But you can also just hit the binoculars in the middle and it'll show you all the ones you have. So I've got a 5 gallon one and a 1 gallon one. Now if I wanted to edit one of these, just make sure you're selected on it and then hit the pencil and you can come in here and edit your values. So this is what'll, this is what'll, uh, when you select one back on kind of the run screen, this is what'll populate it. So like I said before, when you edit these from the run screen, it doesn't save back to this. So whatever's in here is like the saved values and anything you edit on the run screen is just temporary. Um, and when you change between to, between recipes or restart the terminal, um, it'll default back to what's saved in here. So you can adjust all this and then hit OK. Now if you want to add one, just hit the blank paper in the middle, and then you can give it an ID, so the next one would be 3, and then you can enter all your information. Um, once you're done entering all that information, you have to hit the OK button. If you don't hit OK, it won't save. So then to get back out of this, we can hit the back arrow, back arrow, back, um, and scroll back over to memory, and come down to pack, and hit over, and then come down oh, in general. General, and then down to container tear. And when you press on that, the same thing. It's like a tear table. These are your settings. You don't need to adjust them. Or it's like the target table. Same thing like the target table, hit the binoculars. I have two saved in here. This number one uh, correlates with my target table. So number one's five gallons on the target table. So on the tear table, number one is the five gallon pail. Number two is the, um, the one gallon container. So this is where you want to enter your, your tear weights at. Um, so before you start running this, check the containers that you're using and then come in here and edit these and enter your container tear. Now, you just enter the weight here. I think you can tear the scale, like use the weight that's on the scale with this, but I would, I would double check your container weight on another scale as well as on this and make sure they correlate. And then you can just escape back out of all of this.